Um, yeah, just a bit of reflection on giving, like what you have done today on dana. Uh, in Pali, giving, you can call it dana, chaga. It's all generosity, giving from the heart. And giving doesn't always mean giving things. Can giving your time, giving your listening ear, giving your smile. Everybody smile already. <laughs> Very good. But just, just being present is already giving. Not giving to other people, you're giving to yourself as well. Because sometimes you need to receive what you can give as well. That's your own personal goodness. If you think, I don't have anything good to say about me, think again. The fact that you're here, you're present, you're peaceful, that's good enough. When you close your eyes and say, I can be peaceful, I give this to myself. It's, it's a very rare thing, peace. I learned that when I'm at Damasara in monastery. Sometimes when you're in a monastery, you're very, you take for granted, it's so nice and peaceful. Some of you have been there. And then we have people coming from outside. Um, if you've been to Australia, you know what the, the trades people, they wear the high vis. So when they, sometimes you see the trade people, they come in to do work for us, repair work. Or even one lady, I think is a female trades person, she came for lunch or rather lunchtime, she didn't eat. She just uh, sat there and then she started feeling very funny. Then she started crying. And then she felt very embarrassed. You know, sometimes when you cry, like, no reason I cry, so I don't know why. So then she came in, she said, sorry, I, I, I don't mean to ask you this, but I don't, know, I don't understand why I'm crying. But then it's not the sad kind of crying. It's that the, the kind of feeling that you've never caught it very often. And that's the peace the peace that she could feel in the monastery. You know, sometimes it's a hair-raising feeling, you don't know what it is. And like, yeah, I said, grant you a moment of peace in your life. That's the greatest gift that we could give to ourselves. And I said, you just experience a moment of peace and many, many moments of peace there. She was sitting there for an hour, not meditating, you know, just basically sit around and, wow, so nice. Suddenly, all the, the, the troubles that she had, whatever she had in her life, just paused. But the peace was in front, in focus. And that's very, very rare. And sometimes when you, you are able to experience this, any moment could be in your bedroom, could be in your living room, could be here, could be anything. Cherish that kind of a peace that you can ex experience. And then give yourself a moment of peace, or many, many moments of peace. And let that be your own personal dana for yourself. It's very easy to do. Yet sometimes we take for granted. Oh, I want to look for peace in this and that. It's actually where you are. No matter sometimes you have so much things that's happening, you know, everything is not working. But you just sit down and say, okay, I can just sit and let everything else drop for a while. One moment of peace. Breathe in, breathe out. I am at peace. And give that to yourself. It's very nourishing. You know, there's not something vitamins that you can just pop pill, but it's vitamins for the mind and, and body in that way. So grant your moment of peace to yourself and cherish that kind of things. It's it, it's beyond Buddhism, like it's just beyond any any religion can feel peace. Peace doesn't belong to any particular religion. That's why in our monastery, um, anyone walks in and like, wow, so peaceful. Yeah. Does that belong to Buddhism? No. It's just peace. But the fact that we have such monasteries in the world, because the nuns also live in there, the monks live in there. We cultivate the environment so people can come and experience peace for free. You, you don't have to buy peace. <laughs> Just, so it's, it's good. Like BGF also have this environment that you can, you, can have, you can just sit in solitary moment, few moments, maybe one hour, two hours, whatever you can afford. You know? That is, is so good for the body and good for the mind as well. So don't underestimate that kind of power. And, it's like a battery. You drain the battery, you don't recharge. Then the battery 
weak, right? Then you know, it doesn't quite work. So same thing, when you don't have that mental energy, grant a moment of peace to recharge your battery. It's very, very important that said, because peace and um, tranquility, it, it somehow solve a lot of issues in your life, in the life. Even things that you can't, you can't resolve, war in the world, people get upset at this person, you can't fix it, but you can be at peace with whatever that is happening. Don't let that take rob you away from your own internal happiness. You may not agree what people tell you. So okay, let's be at peace as at the disagreement that you have. Yeah. So again, coming back to Dana, um, it's, and uh, it's not just about um, food. Or oh, I do appreciate because I need to eat in a day. <laughs> so thank you. But go beyond that. After food, after makan already, then that's this part about, okay, getting a bit sleepy, <laughs> yes. But also remember, spend some time in your life in a day. Just, just, just don't have to put a time, okay, between two and three, I'm going to be peaceful. I guarantee you, you cannot. <laughs> okay, just when the peace comes, open your door to it. Ah, come, come. Just like your friend will come, oh yeah, 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 don't drop in for a coffee, come, come. It is, you know, it's basically our controlling self. I want to be peaceful between two and three o'clock. Okay, start <laughs> and then stop. It's, it just don't, doesn't quite happen uh, in a way. And you, try, you can try that if you don't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so at any time, even wake up in the morning, just spend five minutes, sit down, reflect. I'm so grateful. I'm so blessed I wake up well today if i don't wake up well i wake up with a cough so be it i just woken up so you can always find things that you're grateful for and be at peace with whatever that is as you encountering something that is unpleasant pain either your own personal pain or other people's pain that you're sharing okay such is life i would just be at peace for five minutes. And then, okay, then, you know, basically that kind of a reaction, it stops you from any, um, something that uh, is more rational. You can approach to problems in a more uh, systematic, rational way. Yeah. So I, I learned this from people who come from the monastery, uh, uh, come to the monastery, they say, wow, after this, I feel I can tackle the world again. I ask why? I don't know. Is it because you had some time for yourself? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So time for yourself is also that. Okay, I can't promise that you'll be peaceful all the time that when you're on it with yourself. I can't be either. So, so um, but whatever it is, just take it and accept it. So the next level of um, giving is accepting. So accepting what has come to us, whether it's a nice feeling or neutral, or uh, I wish I don't have this feeling. <laughs> this, it, it, it is what it is. Lah. So if you can open your heart to it, like Ajahn Brahma always say, you know, open the door of my heart is open to you, whatever it is, the, the, the acceptance. Yeah, we can memorize all his quotes. Need, need to apply now. <laughs> But try, try to customize it to how you can practice it for yourself. Yeah. The teachings of the Buddha is very, very universal. It's Ajahn Brahm, Ajahn Mali, and all the other teachers that you have experienced. But take it home here to yourself. What you can apply, just a tiny little bit, it will help. Customize the words and whatever to suit your own you know, temperament and own personality. And Buddhism is always the DIY, do it yourself, okay? <laughs> it's true. Um, some people who want to look for a religion, they say Buddhism is very difficult because everything is DIY. Really, no choice. I cannot, the Buddha cannot make you enlightened. He can teach you how to be enlightened, but he can't make you enlightened. So it's very much a personal journey. Where we are in our personal journey, it's just your journey. You can't compare with other people. And don't. 
you get more unwholesome thought after that. <laughs> so whatever we are, whoever we are, uh, when we accept ourselves as we are, we can be a lot more at peace. I mean, take away all the makeup and, and hairdo and all that, you know. A lot of it is inside. Sometimes we are our own worst enemy. We don't like the way we feel, you know, that kind of feeling. I, I wish I, be, I, I can be a little bit more like this, like this, or like that, like that. There's a lot of desire. It's a self-desire in that sense. And then who suffer? Us. Okay, realizing it is one thing. Don't beat yourself for that just because you're feeling like that, okay? Forgive yourself. Say, yeah, I'm trying. This is, this is where I am at now. So let be. So it's a lot of acceptance, a lot of forgiving for who we are, how we are. Um, like how life is how it is. So you can gear yourself into a more wholesome practice by just realizing where you are and don't add on the negativity to whatever it is. If you're already negative, just don't tamba one more. It just, just stay as negative as you are. You know, like that kind of feeling, just stay there. And then watch it. It might go up, it might go down. Nothing stays forever. You can't be upset 100% all the time. Maybe you will drop to 99 now. Or maybe go 105. So it's not, nothing stays forever and have faith in that anicca, the impermanence of the teaching. So when you have faith in nothing stays forever, you can have faith that things can change and evolve its way to the next state of, of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So now we talk about giving, we talk about accepting. The next thing I was thinking, accepting is not always the easiest thing also. So if we backtrack a little bit, perhaps we can go into like um, gratitude. Sometimes you wake up with something that everything, okay, wake up late already, hair not nice, and then our oh, face also a bit swollen, have to get to work. <laughs> yeah, we, we all can relate to it some point, some point of time. And then, Car breakdown, you know, you know, like you know, one of those days where everything could just go wrong. Um, then it's the time to kick in the gratitude, you know, like okay, what what go right? Nothing. <laughs> but you can also say, you know what? I actually try to have a gratitude. That's like the worst case scenario. I could find I I, I try to find something to be grateful of. I still found found it, and I'm still looking for it. <laughs> To just maybe, you know, like twist the mind to, 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 to say, hey, it's, yeah, today is my worst day, okay, uh, but have faith that it will change. So gratitude sometimes can go very, very deep in terms that you wake up, you're so not well. And then what else? Oh, maybe I can have gratitude that I'm still breathing. If you're not breathing properly, you say, okay, maybe I, I'm still breathing, but not so well. But basically, you have everything that is going for you that can, you can find some, some level of gratitude for. And just focus on that. And, and slowly, slowly, hopefully, that gratitude, the thankfulness will expand and change the mood a little bit. So this is one way that we can try to navigate ourselves through the troubles in life. And what happens if somebody say things that you don't like to yourself? The theory is like, it's not my problem, right? But the reality is like, why she say like that? Don't she understand, it's supposed to be Buddhist. That, that sort of, you know, that, that mindset always comes. Uh, trust me, in the monastery, same, same. Huh? <laughs> as long as you're not enlightened, it will happen. But, um, there's this effort to like catch yourself saying this and don't punish yourself for going through that and say, okay, how can I do better next time? Maybe I can just say, okay, okay, I know I'm upset, but I just don't open my mouth. I go, I go somewhere first and then just cool down and then come back later and, and deal with it, okay? So just find some skillful means. 
again, like like Jan Brown used to say, water the flowers, don't water the weeds, you know. They kind of try to focus on the positive side of the person. If you cannot find any, just, just say, okay, the fact that I'm looking for it is already good enough. So just, just I'm going to down the bare minimum. I'm sure you can find easier way to do than that. So coming back to um, dana and giving and, and acceptance. So accepting yourself, accepting others, accepting how things are for us here. It's, it's just, it brings us a lot more peace when we are able to have that acceptance, isn't it? And one, one of the, you know, you all, you probably learned some Pali terms like um, craving, craving tanha, craving I want this, I want that. It's not just always things that you want. You also want the, I want to feel good. I want to be treated nicely. I want to be this. I want my food to come on time and blah, 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 and all that kind of thing. So that's that craving, you can say, but that's life. You need to have that kind of thing. It's true. It's true. It's not, the craving is not a problem. The craving is, becomes a problem only when you add on the suffering to say, okay, I don't get it. Therefore, uh, somebody is in trouble now, that kind of thing. Yeah. So that, just know the part about, you need to go, you need to eat, you need to go to the toilet, That's, that has to happen. But the fact that if you, something in between make that unpleasant, so that's the reaction to the, the so-called one thing to do things. Yeah. So just catch yourself to, when, when that happens, yeah? Mm. Okay, um, so that's a short reflection in the sense that um, giving, Again, it's something that you do every day, whether it's things or giving yourself a peace of mind, a piece of a moment of peace. And accepting is accepting what people give you, accepting what you give to yourself. And um, just the attitude of um, great, being grateful and gratitude, it, it, bring, it carries us a long, long way. When everything falls apart, just think of how we can be grateful for where we are today and how we are. And trust the law of impermanence, trust the law of karma. Um, the Buddha said karma is a very complex thing, but where we are today is our own past karma. Where we are to next in the future is what we do now. So what's the most important time is actually how we live ourselves in the present moment. So I offer this for your reflection. I can invite questions. Okay, no, um, you can ask me anything. No need to be um, what I've just spoken just now. Uh, Okay, it's very normal. When it comes to question, no question. <laughs> yes. Now they want they want to record. Mic test. Mic test. Mic test. <clears throat> I use this now. Yeah. Yes. Um, in terms of gratitude. Can we also make use of uh, not just what we do, but what other people do? Yeah. yeah. Um, hello? Hello? Um, yeah, you can compound all the time. The borrowed thing is okay one. Uh, so if somebody have a, a good time, a good meditation, won a lottery, <laughs> You can rejoice. The word is rejoice. Okay, someone have uh, bought a new house, new car. It's like, I think we automatically have this thing called, wow, nice, huh? Um, yeah, it's, it's actually an instant, quite, a, quite an instant joy in that sense. Uh, what in Pali, we can use the word mudita, which is um, rejoicing in other people's uh, well-being or uh, success. Or that. Okay. So that's a good question. So you can't find anything else. Well, can always borrow and look around. Oh, wow. She's got very nice hair. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, it just gives you that little boost of happiness because once you are you reset yourself into a happy state, it's very easy to find more happy things. It's when you are in the grouchy, grumpy mode. Uh, very hard to. You need to find 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 something. Okay, back. all right, that's good. Let's let's from there just just have gratitude. I mean, the very easy gratitude is to the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha. The fact that we are the teachings are available to us now in this present time is um, very very rare, you know, for people to be able to hear the, the words of the, uh, the Buddha, which is the Dhamma. It's like a mental medicine for your own personal suffering. If you use it well enough, you can take all your suffering away and be enlightened. That's how far we can get to. Yeah. If you follow the Noble Eightfold Path, that is all the Eightfold Path, not one full path, not just Samadhi, not just meditate, meditate, meditate. You also have to have the other seven. You have to have right speech, right you know, livelihood, right everything. All the eight. Then you have a chance to experience the freedom from suffering that the Buddha has uh, have mentioned, have prescribed to us in a way. So it's DIY religion again. Do it yourself. So do as far as as much as you can. Um, just capitalize on all opportunities. We don't have. We don't know when our last moment will be. So while we are here, while we are able to, we can sit down, can hear, can see, can practice. Go for it. Okay, you can practice well as a lay person. Seriously, I've seen many, many very good lay practitioners. Doesn't mean that you have to ordain and become a monk or a nun. Then only can practice. No, start now. Start. Anytime, now, now. Breathe in, breathe out. You're breathing, we're breathing. So practice. Connect with people who you can relate to, monks or nuns. Ask questions, clarify your practice. And then go back, DIY. And see how you can always check whether you're progressing or not by how much have you let go. Maybe last time you, were, you can be angry at one episode for one hour. If you now... Uh, angry only for 55 minutes. You cut down five minutes on suffering already, you know. And that's kind of a lot, you know. Five minutes, when you're angry, five minutes is very long. On, okay? So, just, just, you know, all these are very encouraging. Uh. Don't just like bow, chant the itipiso and all that, but see how the progress of where you are and all that. If people irritate you and see how long you can be irritated for, and then check back. Okay, how can you... Reduce that, okay, focus on gratitude, focus on acceptance, focus on breathing. Simple, simple things. But just, actually the easiest teaching is the simplest one or the most effective one. Because it hit you home, it hit you now. Not when you understand some such and such scriptures. Don't wait until you try to understand nothing, just now. Okay, yeah. In our monastery, oh sorry, we have a question. In our Dhammasara monastery, every lunchtime we have a short Dhamma reflection by Ajahn Hasapanya or some of the senior nuns. Um, it's a five minutes thing, it's a five minute Dhamma talk. But it kind of like hit home, very, very short, very to the point. So, this is what I'm trying to also deliver uh, from my experience that. Attention, especially after lunch, is maybe half an hour, max. <laughs> <laughs> so what the keynote, what take home is present moment awareness, being in the present, giving, accepting, forgiveness, gratitude. That's it. So, and it, it, it's basically all these help you to live a better life, help you to live a happier life, and help you to live a more let go life, you know, the feeling of I'm not so burdened, the, the shoulder not so heavy, so, yeah, whatever, it's okay. There is a sutta, the Buddha said, the noble ones live, L-I-V-E, live, even, even, amidst the uneven. Life can be uneven, it is. There's problems in the world, there's silly people, there's silly behavior, it's just life that we can be even amidst the uneven. 
So try for that, strive for that. It, it takes away a lot of uh, mental suffering. Happy customer. <laughs> Since nobody asked question, I asked some simple question. Uh, I just want to know when Robert in the Nandari monastery that you are there in Australia, what are the daily routine for uh, nuns uh, in uh, every day? Do you um, give dharma talk, hold dharma talk like Ajahn Brahm, so busy? Um, and uh, what are the requirements uh, those lay people uh, if uh, she decided to renounce and? Uh, where are the ordination to be held? Some some of this, uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, just first question is what's a daily routine? Can you hear everybody? Yeah. Um, six thirty is breakfast. You can wake up at six twenty nine and run all the way to get breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to wake up at three, that's optional. But generally, most of the nuns. Um, we have our own routine. Some are more night people, some are more day people. So you can, we don't have this, this um, 3.30 bell ring, go sit meditation for two hours and then chanting. We don't have that in Damasara. For the reason is everyone is different. We want to capitalize on your good, the moments that you are, um, how do you say, your, your, your time. If you're, you're for a night bird, then you stay up late. Some people wake up early, then they're happy to wake up at 3. But the night people, you ask them to wake up at 3, they just fall asleep. You, 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 you'll be very skilled at sitting upright, sleeping. No point. Waste of time. So 6.30 is breakfast. Um, what you do before that is your thing. But for junior nuns, because um, junior nuns means um, below 5 vasa, 5 reigns, they're considered junior nuns. Bikuni, novice, and Nagarikas, and then lay people join in. We have twice a week of morning sit, five to six in the morning, uh, morning uh, Monday and Friday, and then followed by uh, 10 minutes uh, chanting the, the Yoso Bhagawa, the one that uh, the, Thai, the Thai people chant, Thai monks chant. Then again, 6.30 is breakfast. For the middle nuns and the senior nuns, it's optional. They want to join, they can, but generally they don't come. So the night program only twice a week, which is Wednesday and Saturday at 7.30. Um, seven, uh, on Wednesday is um, English chanting. So what we chant, like Itipiso and all that, we chant all in English, so that we kind of know what we're chanting. And also, uh, we play a Dhamma talk that night. But if Ajahn Brahm, like yesterday, last night, Ajahn Brahm is in Bodhiana and he gave a Dhamma talk, we have live stream. So we have a big projector, we chant together with the monks live. And then we play his talk. I mean, not play, it's live, live streaming of his talk. Some nuns may choose to go to Bodhiana, and that's Wednesday. Saturday at 7.30, we have a full parita chanting. Parita means protective chant. The mangala, the ratana, the metta, and then transferring the merit and all that. About half an hour of the chant, all in Pali. And we have one hour meditation, everyone to come together. So that's pretty much the program. And lunch every day is at 10.30. And then the lunch program where day visitors come in to bring dana for us because we are arms mendicant. Uh, one of the reasons, also some people ask whether I'm vegetarian or not. In Damasara, basically, we accept everything, um, vegetarian or not vegetarian. Only like the same rule applies to all monastic. We cannot, if we know that you uh, order or kill a particular animal for us, then, then we don't touch that thing or raw food or something. So basically anything people bring uh, is offered, then the nuns will be able to take it. So we don't pick and choose. If some nuns are vegetarian, they just pick whatever is suitable for them. So that's uh, our, our way of our arms mendicant. We don't impose on people, oh, you must bring this for us. It's very hard in Australia. And then I look at you, I want to feed you already good. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, a lot of the being in the West is very challenging for the Eastern religion. You know, they they look at you. You sure or not? You know that that that. Okay? So you really have to practice well, and you have to be able to speak their language. And now I think um, the new modern way is all the pronouns and all that. My goodness, I have to learn what it is. <laughs> so those so things like that. Um, in terms of Dharma talk, like Ajahn Brahm, he's very busy only when he travel. Okay, when he's back in Bodhiana, he's a monk. So likewise, when I'm back in in, in Dhammasara and all that, I'm I'm in the middle. I'm a middle nun. So I sit, middle means after five. Um, only the senior nuns give talk. Uh, once in a while, we we I follow and do house chant, blessing, house dana, or uh, funeral or uh, hospital sick people. We we go and chant or uh, elderly where they need a bit of a boost. We chant. Yeah. So that one we get invited out. Most of the time, we will be in our monastery. So we are actually a forest nun, so we live in a forest. <laughs> Second question is like, if you want to ordain, the best thing is to go and live in a monastery for a little bit longer. And then learn the, see whether that particular monastery suits your temperament. Because all monasteries are different. Um, just like school. I mean, you can't really choose school, but university, let's say. Yeah? You hear say, okay, this one's like that, that one's like that, that one's like that. So you go and try. And you live in the monastery for a little bit longer. One week, sometimes you can't see. So those people who really want to be a nun, we invite them for three months. After three months, is for them to observe us, for us to observe them. Some may not last three months. Some will last longer. And after that, you can choose to submit your application whether you want to be going to the next step, which is the one year of going um, white, shaved head, wear a white robe. They call it Anagarika or eight preceptor. You still hold money, uh, but you are like the next step going into before brown. And the one important thing of that is you take your dependence on the monastery. That has hit me a lot because I was a very independent woman before. I work, um, I have my own life. Um, I don't need to ask permission from anyone, including Home Minister, to do anything. <laughs> so, when I go into the monastery, that's my challenge, you know. You have to ask permission. It's hard, because that's me. But some people are very natural of asking permission. Oh, everything also must check with people. But I'm not. So, when I, had to, when I took dependence, um, personally, that was hard. It broke me down a lot because want to have a phone call also have to tell people. <laughs> want to go for, on the internet also must ask permission. Actually, the answer is always can, but because you have to ask, you know, it's a big difference, you know. Then you're like, ah, paise. But then, um, actually, that's the training in monastic life of letting go. We balance between, uh, how do you say, strictness. If you're too strict, you can only last a short while because you're so tense, you don't want to make mistake. But the fact that this gear you to be a bit more surrendering to how things should, you know, less desires in the world, so I trust the process is helpful for me. So taking dependence as a white is the first step into monastic life. You can't want to go out with friend or have a cup of coffee outside. You still have money, you still can go. But you have to ask the abbot. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll ask you, why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, like a little kid, huh? when you want to go out, you have to ask your mama. So it goes back like that. And, but it actually breaks your ego and breaks your desire down so much. The thing is, you don't do it, you don't try it just on the spot, you crash. You do it over time. And eventually, you don't feel like going out anymore. And now why people ask me, why your trip so short? Because I just love the monastery, I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, it's just like that. So after the one year of uh, being in Hawaii, the thing is all very practical, you know. It's not like theory, okay, you know, I'm going to shave my head, I'm going to do, I'm going to carry my bag this way, carry bow that way. It's all in the form. Try living a life like that. I give you a simile. You if you've never been married, I tell you what is married life. Are you imagine 
compared to what you actually is married. Okay, so just similar in, in the monastic life, you have to live it. So when you live it until you make it. <laughs> so you live it, but then it's, it's gradual. We don't force you into like, oh, you have to keep all these rules. So like slowly, slowly, slowly. And you will know how long you can last for that. There is no timeline. You can be a novice nun for a long, long, long time. So after one year of Anagarika, you can choose to become brown. They call it like you be brownify, you know, the brownies. So the first step is 10 precepts. Eight precepts is a white, like you all know eight precepts, yeah? Atasila. Then Dasasila, which is the 10 precept. One big change in eight to 10, relinquishing of money. One precept, but one a big change. The day that you cannot use credit card anymore, the day you cannot use your touch and go anymore, the day that you depend on people to like, I don't know whether she can buy me this or not. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's all right. You know, all this, right? If it, if it is so depressed and so difficult, right? You can go back. There's no shame. Every step in all this ordination and uh, renunciation, stay in the present again. When you can't do it, go back. Go back to A precept. Cannot go back to five precept. Stay at five percent. Try, try, try. It's another five percent. Okay, okay. Don't reduce anymore. Um, so I think the the wonderful thing about the Buddhist path is there's no how do you say a goal or a thing. Okay, you know you're a bhikkhuni. There you made it. You can have very very good lay practitioners, but you sometimes I like okay some of the nuns, <laughs> but everyone is just trying, right? So do what you can within your own capacity and comfort. If you, if you push yourself and you fall off the edge, then kind of like, um, yeah, either you mentally you got a bit difficult and it's a lot of suffering. The path, the Buddhist path is a path of happiness. When you are actually, your suffering is more than your happiness, uh, check back again, are you doing it right or not? Did the Buddha say like this or not? Okay, so again, DIY, check back. Are you happier? when you're doing the Dhamma, if you're not, ask question, ask the teacher, check back what you are doing. It has to be that over, I mean, not happy all the time, but basically the average happiness, or you know that it's a potentially you can be happier. Just say, okay, you're supposed to uh, not eat a lot of, what, sugar, fat, I don't know. I mean, you know, if you eat a lot of that, then you will have other consequences. So likewise, you know, it, Everything in moderation. So try, try very much hard the middle way. Don't go in the extreme of torturing yourself. I'm going to sit at a cemetery, you know, meditate, meditate all night and all that. Then it doesn't work. The body is the body. The mind is the mind. You push the mind off the edge, the mind will rebel. You push your body off the edge, you will hospital. Just, 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 you already know the consequence, but people still want to do that. But what to do? Yeah, like, yeah. So I hope that answers your question. So everything is a gradual process. I'm just speaking for monast uh, Dhammasara Monastery, the timeline. So other monasteries may have different timeline. So after two years of a, as a novice, 10 preceptor, um, you can apply to go on higher ordination, which is taking from 10 precepts to 311 precepts. It's called the bhikkhuni. Bhikkhuni is the equivalent of bhikkhu. Bhikkhu is a fully ordained monk. Bikuni with the N-I is fully ordained nun in the Theravada tradition. Yeah. Why we have so many precepts? Monks only have 227. We are not here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, um, okay, the Buddha didn't pull up a long list of, hey, I'm going to write the rules for the nun. Da, 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 da. It doesn't happen that way. It happens when things happen, okay? For example, I think you all know the story. Some of the, some non-mischievous and then they do something that the lay people don't like. You see, you're very powerful, you know, you can complain to the Buddha, right? <laughs> Cannot tahan this nun do like this. And then the Buddha will say, call the nun. Okay, did, did you do this? The Buddha always asks, did you do what the lay people said? And the nun said, yes, uh, okay. Then the Buddha was close, 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 don't do this, 
then up comes the rule. But most of the rules are actually for safety because women in India at that time, um, one of the rules like I cannot walk from one village to another alone. That's also for safety. So monks don't have that rule. They go on Tudong, they go on, uh, you know. Yeah, that. But I have to have another female companion with me. So this is one example. Safety, also uh, protection of women. Um, so that we don't, I have a rule that I cannot do housework. So because what happened is you can feed a nun and you call the nun, uh, mop the floor, uh, clean this, and it becomes like a maid. Mm. A nun is not a maid. So all these are protecting, but women in, in the eyes of uh, those days are you know, equal to housework, cooking. You know. So when you have that rule, we actually live in a monastery, we don't do it. With the exception if it's my family, my parents. My parents are old and I need to help them do things. I, can, I have my rule. <laughs> so there's compassion as well in there. So, just, so that's it for bhikkhunis. So we have now 11 bhikkhunis in Damasara. So last Vasa, we have 18 uh, of us. Quite a big community in Damasara. And we have a sister monastery in Santi, five uh, nuns there. So quite quite uh, flourishing, quite, quite growing, uh, the community of Theravada nuns in Australia. Is there a space for lay people to, to stay for temporary? Is there a what? A uh, place for lay people to practice temporary there? Yes. For the three months that you're staying or for the one night you're staying, there is what we call the lay guest uh, accommodation. Um, it's very comfortable. It's on a um, single room, mostly en suite, except for a couple of rooms at the toilet just outside. So you have your own personal space. You don't share room, except when DGF went there. <laughs> <laughs> but generally, no. Yeah. So we have a lay. Um, it's very comfortable heating and uh, cooling. You have your own bathroom. You have laundry services. You have electricity. So yeah. Also, the other thing. I wanted to mention is not limited to um, just healthy women. We have women who have got illness, it could be chronic illness or pregnant, uh, elderly or new mothers. We try to accommodate as many spectrum of women as possible so that we make the living area for lay guests with a, a high level of comfort as much as possible. For the nuns, it's different. We are going austere. <laughs> yeah. uh, Reverend, do you have a special WhatsApp group uh, for all the parents of the nun and monk? Um, no. <laughs> Why uh, WhatsApp group for all the parents? We don't have that. So that they can help each other. Uh, the parents can help each other. Ah, okay. They're all over the place. I don't think they know each other. Some of them. Not, not really. We don't have that, that connection. Yeah. They, they either come to the monastery or... Yeah. I, I don't know somebody, some of the nuns' parents either. So. And who take care of your parents? Right now, I have my brother who's uh, you know, overseeing them and I, I connect with them every week or so. Yeah. So we have to ask permission before we, we go forth. But one of the commitment of the monastic monks and nuns, if your parents really need you, you come back and take care of them. Okay, so the parents haven't lost a daughter or a son, they gain a sangha. It's a big difference. Okay, it's a commitment. You, you have heard some elderly monks come back to take care of their mom until they've passed away. Yeah. It's a commitment. It's in the sutta. But you're not responsible for your children if you have kids i mean as a monastic mm -hmm. because the kids was, you know they will grow up in a way yeah. so parents have no fear if you no. keep want to for them <laughs> i think we have to go um, so yeah oh, sorry, sorry. Better bro. so when you come back home do you stay at home i stay with currently i uh, the most convenient for me is to stay with my brother he has a spare room uh, I can stay in within a family with a lockable room and not sharing room. Um, I can share for like a very short time for in my room, uh, one or two nights, uh, uh, two or three nights, yeah. But 
so far I'm okay because my, my brother has a spare room and he offered me breakfast. He and his wife offered me breakfast in the morning. So I, we live within the Vinaya quite well when I'm back here to take care of my parents. Yeah. Even uh, I know those who are non-Buddhist families, also they try their best to accommodate uh, the monk or the nun who, are, who comes back for, to visit. It's quite amazing how the family fit themselves into, rather than reunion lunch, uh, uh, re reunion dinner for Ch Chinese New Year, they become reunion lunch. <laughs> yes, I've seen Ch Christian family doing that. So it's quite inspiring in how they try to fit into what our rules are. Okay, I, yes. Uh, sorry, sorry uh, last minute I have a question pop up okay. in my mind. I would like to check, it could be, um, I think it could be a, lo a little bit long for you to explain how do we live in this era because this era is full of scandal and full of all these fraught issues going on um quick answer is um simplify your life you don't have too many credit cards or <laughs> everything so streamline simplify so you can protect what you need to protect in terms of scammers or whatever you know then but don't have hatred towards these people. It's not your problem. You protect your property. Okay, that's a short answer. Thank you. <laughs> okay, there's no more questions. Uh, let's uh, bow down, pay respects to Venerup. Uh, ask Venerup to share it, Marys. So we will share this merit. If you know the chant, uh, just chant along. Akasata chabumata devana gama hindika unyantang anamoditwa chirang rakkantu loka sasanang Akasata chabumata devana gama hindika Punyantang anumoditwa chirang rakkantu desanang Akasata chabumata devanaga mahindika Punyantang anumoditwa chirang rakkantu mamparamti Etavata cha amhehi sambatang punya sampadang Sambhe Deva Anumodantu Sabha Sampati Sindhya Eta Vata Cha Amhehi Sambhatam Punya Sampadam Sambhe Buddha Anumodantu Sabha Sampati Sindhya Eta Vata Cha Amhehi Sambatam punya sampadam, sambe satta anumodantu, sapa sampati sedia, idam menya tinang hotu, sukika hontu nyateo, idam menya tinang hotu, sukika hontu nyateo, idam menya tinang hotu, sukika hontu nyateo. May the, merit, may the merits that have been accumulated by all of us here be shared with all beings in all directions. Sadhu, sadhu.